Greetings, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as the case might be. Welcome or welcome back, again, as the case might be. My name is Dalibor Petrovic. I'm a partner at Deloitte. And for the last three years, I have had a distinct pleasure of hosting the series of our live webcast conversations. Uh, many of you know that we use this channel to interview Canadian technology leaders, Canadian technology executives, under the series titled Conversations with Tech Leaders Shaping the Future of Canada. Uh, but we also, at times, bring what we feel is timely and relevant content that technology-curious leaders in Canada should be interested in. Um, and today, we are kickstarting a new series on this particular front. Uh, we're going to be unpacking uh, the highly relevant and topical uh, discussion on ecosystems, ecosystems and alliances. And today, I am thrilled uh, to be hosting our first episode of that four-part series, which is going to unfold over the next year or so. Uh, for audience members who are joining us again, you would know that this, of course, is a live, uh, live event. So you will have an opportunity to directly engage with our panelists today. Uh, and I would encourage you to do that using the Q&A function of this Zoom platform. We have prepared for about an hour, so uh, please keep your questions coming. And with that, I am very, very thrilled to welcome uh, my friends and colleagues to this panel. Uh, first, uh, Dayan Slokar. Um, Dayan is a senior partner at Deloitte in Canada. Uh, and I know him and I are just uh, celebrating our 18th year in the firm, which is incredible, right? Um, so, Dayan, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dayan is Hello. the managing partner of Deloitte's uh, Alliances and Ecosystems. So this is absolutely at the epicenter uh, of, 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 uh, of, of the business that Dan is driving uh, for Deloitte in Canada. We are also joined by two global experts on the topic of ecosystems, alliances, and channels. Uh, I'm thrilled to welcome Jay McBain. Jane is the channel guy. He mm -hmm. is the ecosystem dude. And uh, uh, right now, he is the chief analyst uh, with uh, Canalis, which is the, uh, the organization that is uh, conducting global research and advice on the evolution of the concept of ecosystems and alliances uh, with a vast experience in the ecosystem and alliances uh, that, that sort of cuts across the North America from being the channel chief at IBM and Lenovo afterwards to being the lead uh, uh, lead an principal analyst with Forrester and now a chief analyst with Canalis. And then our fourth face today is Vince Menzione, who is also joining us from Florida. Vince is our hyperscaler guy, having uh, for, the, for about 10 years led Microsoft's Partners and Alliances business a $4.6 billion business. And after his tenure at Microsoft, now is the uh, the, the, the co-founder and a chief partner with the, uh, the ultimate partner. Again, the organization that's focused on helping clients deal with, organize, structure, and operate uh, effective, effective ecosystems. Vince is also a host of the Ultimate Guide to Partnering podcast. Gentlemen, thank you so very much for finding the time to be with us this morning. Look, I would like to start with establishing some, some common definitions, of course. I think that everyone who is joining here has heard about ecosystems and alliances and channels. Can we maybe establish at the very beginning, what do we mean when we say ecosystems and how are they different from alliances and channels so i don't know maybe dan that could be the where we start uh, uh first Dalbor, thanks for having us on uh really looking forward to conversation with this distinguished panel and um uh, really hoping to provide some insights and uh you know actionable uh, uh next steps for our audience to kind of think through this this very important topic um Maybe before I kind of, uh, frame the difference between ecosystem and alliances, I'll say what's common for both. They are 
all anchored in the relationships uh, and they're all anchored in the value uh, that those relationships can drive. And so if you then take a step, step back and we think about alliances, um, there are types of relationships. And I would say alliances as a word, which is really commonly used, represent to me at least the highest level of that relationship means collaboration, co-invention, co-investment, joint go to market. Uh, you know, it, it, it embodies the, the highest level of relationship that two organizations may have between themselves to drive the common common goal, common agenda. Um, there are other types of relationships, you know, and, you know, Jay, Jay is probably the best person to, to cover that, but he did say uh, behind his right shoulder is a framework for how, how to think about different relationships, business models, and so on. So uh, I will let him chime in on this as well. But moving to the ecosystem, um, framing ecosystem, that is the assembly of different types of relationships and different types of business models that as organization supports directly execution of your strategy and drives impact um, uh, for organization itself, their clients, their industry, and mm -hmm. so on. And so it's assembly of multiple relationships multiple. working together to drive that value. Mm -hmm. Jay, anything to add on this? We're defining channels, alliances, ecosystems. Yeah, so ecosystem is a holistic, it's an all-encompassing yeah. term. Uh, we've, we've thought about partnerships, and by the way, partnerships have been around since the start of time. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, the oldest company in the world, the Hudson Bay Company in, in Canada, uh, has, has been forming partnerships, again, since the start of time. But we've always thought of them linear way from a raw materials, through a supply chain, through a go-to-market and several routes to market and how all the distribution and wholesale works. And, and a lot of the differentiation within those partnerships has been on two different things. Either how money changes hands, and I'll say that last year in the $104 trillion world GDP, 75% of it changed hands through others, forming partnerships. You bought your last car from a dealer. You bought your last TV set from a retailer. You bought your last jar of peanut butter from a grocer. Almost everything you do in your personal and professional life goes through others. Yeah. Industry by industry by industry. In the $5 trillion tech and telco industry last year, 73.3% of that $5 trillion went through others. Mm. So this is the way money changes hands and one of the ways that we defined as channels in the past. Mm -hmm. In the way that money doesn't change hands, but all the co-innovation and other things that uh, Dan had talked about, those are in the you know, alliance world, the strategic and the business alliances, and now the tech alliances that are driving every company in every industry. You know, we kind of frame those up differently. Many companies you know, have teams on alliances that aren't aligned into the same department as channels and definitely aren't in the same department as supply chain folks. Mm -hmm. But in the ecosystem, everything that impacts your company, your customer, and everything in the universe between you forms this ecosystem. And we're starting to talk about this holistically now, and Vince is probably the right person to kind of frame up what all that means and, mm -hmm. and how we can go from this definition to start putting together strategies and processes and, and, and different foundational elements uh, to make that successful. What Jay says is spot on, right? We, we talk about transaction. We think about, when we think about channels, when we think about partnerships, in fact, and alliances, we often think about a single thread. We think about two organizations mm -hmm. coming together for a better together, and we're missing the entire value creation, the multiple seats at the table facing the customer. And in this world, I mean, this evolution that we've seen, this world of rapid change and digital transformation, we've seen the three hyperscalers, as an example, play a profoundly more important role in value in the value creation process, right? They are the ones that can build these massive data centers, aggregate amazing technologies. And we're seeing this now with Gen AI, right? Some of these leaders are leading the, the charge. And then the solutions organizations and the delivery organizations to the customer, all the, all the organizations that are surrounding 
and creating the value for the end purpose, whether it be an end customer or an organization of some type, they all have to come together to, to solve for this. Yeah. And to Jay's point, what happens in organizations is they think about things like alliances as being a departmental function. And they think about channels as being another de departmental function. And I see this all the time. The two organizations don't work together. Mm -hmm. They don't collaborate yeah. across each yeah. other. You've got one organization on an alliance side that's maybe aggregated across the hyperscalers or others, other partner types. And then the channel is delivering widgets, essentially. It's the old model that yeah. grew up out of Boca Raton down here in Florida when Bill Gates signed an agreement with IBM to go license software, right? And a whole industry, a whole industry around channels was created. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the world has changed. We're, we're evolving. And that's why the importance of this being, as Jay co coined it, the decade of the ecosystem is just so important, so prevalent right now. Yeah. So if I was to summarize these terms, how I understood them, channels is really, you should think of a channel as a linear way the money changes hands. And it can have one or more organizations that are lined up in that value chain, but it's 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 the way a particular product gets to market, for example, through passing through multiple organizations lined up in in serial, typically serially. Alliance would be could be defined as the most uh, most strategic uh, level of interplay and interaction between two organizations that come together to co-create, to co-invest to go to market together, but singular alliance, one-to-one. -one. Right. Ecosystem represents multiple relationships. Some of those will be alliances, others will be channels, all together creating an, an ecosystem for the singular purpose of creating some form of value for the client, some form of value, right? So multiple players. So that's actually, I think, a very, very good way to summarize and think about this. So now let's jump into the next thing. As Everyone knows, and you actually mentioned this is not a new alliances are not a new thing, right? So any reflections, Vince, on how alliances today differ from what we would have expected or seen alliances be, you know, 20 years ago, the yeah. outsourcing arrangements, business process outsourcing arrangements, like that, that kind of stuff. How how yeah. is it today different? Well, very di hopefully very different, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what you described is a really like a, a vendor relationship, right? Mm -hmm. On the, on, on the outsourcing, I, I think outsourcing is not really tr truly being partnership, right? So the, the, That's it's, it's, it's like, I will, I will pay you, I will transact dollars to you if you do this for me, right? It's very transactional in nature. It's very, it's not coming together with a common value, a common vision of success, a better together and aligning as you described the organization across department across departments of the organization, right? As you think about the leadership team being aligned, the product team being aligned, the sales organization, the marketing organization, all of those functional areas on both sides create a true alliance. And executing a true alliance strategy, in fact, is still evolving today. Not a lot of organizations get that right even. And I talk about a set of operating principles around that, getting the mindset of both organizations to truly drive a win-win and have trust between the organizations, applying a executive commitment on both sides, uh, getting, getting to that level of you know both sides really being in agreement on this is the best thing to do both, for both organizations, and then applying maniacal focus and a set of metrics to support it. And mm -hmm. to the, the, uh, the organizations that get it right on their alliances strategy and any type of partner strategy are the ones that apply those principles to successfully execute an alliance strategy. So what you described 20 years ago was more of a vendor relationship. Vendor, yeah, vendor, we, we will yeah. give you some work to do. We'll outsource the work to you. We'll pay you dollars to do it, but we're not truly aligned in a partnership. The alliance strategy says, yeah, we're going to truly align in a partnership. But again, a lot of organizations still don't get this right. So I, I suggest that there's a set of operating principles and if, when you apply those set of operating principles, you have a better chance of success. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any reflections from from you, Jay or Dan, on this on this particular topic? Yeah, I would say you know, starting from individual organization, their role, their mission, their purpose um, is what anchors the, for me at least relationship uh, the context of ecosystem. Because it'll be different for everyone, and um, you know, 
you know, Jay's comment around decade of ecosystem, I, I, I love it. And I, it's something that really resonated with me. Why? Because there's such an opportunity for organizations to really take a different lens on this topic themselves and move on from what Vince was talking about, uh, the outsourcing, the DPOs, the, you know, the vendor type of relationship and look at strategic part partnerships as a minimum that are part of their broad ecosystem that drives their strategy and value. Yeah. And being intentional on that is really the opportunity here. So yeah. um, I would add that and maybe pass it over to Jay for yeah. some additional comments. Yeah, so if you, if you look at Canadian firms, over half of them outsource some or all of their business functions, the, the sales, the marketing, the HR, the operations, the finance, when you look across. If, if we just looked at technology, which uh, we, we've been talking about here, 30% of Canadian firms outsource some or all of their IT. Mm -hmm. And that goes from SMB, which is the majority of, of Canadian businesses, mid-market up through kind of the fortune size of, of Canadian businesses, governments, health, education, et cetera. So outsourcing is absolutely part of the um, fabric of, of yeah. ecosystem. The average Canadian firm of a mid-size, let's say 500 employees and above, have seven partners they trust today. That might be Deloitte. That also might be a major managed service provider. It could be a VAR, a digital agency, an accounting, you know, CPA, CGA type of firm in Canada. It can be a consulting type of firm, but the average is seven. So in the old linear world where there might have been a single throat to choke, there might have been a single trusted advisor, today with ecosystems, especially driven by subscription and consumption models, yep, yep. the average customer in Canada would come back and say, no, no, here is the group of people I trust to co-innovate together, to build value together, and to leverage each other's network effects together. And then that's how all boats rise, mm. not only delivering customer value, but GDP and economic value to Canada as well. Correct. That's yeah. the new world of ecosystems. And one or more of those seven partners would be an outsourcee of some type, perhaps. Yeah, that's right. Th themselves, right? So this it's the multi-layered, like the, the Russian nesting doll kind of visual that I have in my head on this. Uh, we mentioned something interesting, like uh, obviously our audience here is mostly people who are curious and interested in technology and tech leadership. So mentally we gravitate to tech alliances and tech ecosystems that are emerging. But I, I sense of course there are, there are different types of, of ecosystems that are that exist out there. So maybe then you and I actually did speak about this earlier, but how you think about these different types of ecosystems and how would you invite our audience to sort of start thinking about that too yeah i mean again the uh the the anchor point is um you know the the, the value focus of it the purpose of it the the outcome that uh as an ecosystem uh that's being formed you know uh is intended to achieve and so from that perspective uh they do evolve uh to accommodate that construct and i'll Maybe as I was working through my understanding and thinking through this, I see these ecosystems now everywhere. Uh, I think technology is certainly something that uh, we are focusing on this call as well. But if I think about patient healthcare and focus of all of the uh, uh, different providers, the uh, you know whether it's uh, the hospitals or independent uh, service providers, chiropractors, community care centers, and so on, that's one big ecosystem that works for the benefit of a citizen and for and their health and uh, how that gets orchestrated uh, and, and who orchestrates it uh, is also a question that um, you know does give certain level of intent and progress and value back into that ecosystem what is individual role of those players in that ecosystem you know is also important and understanding organizational role and playing to those strengths is also important so no matter which way you look at it whether you are um, you know, uh, uh, part of that uh, value chain and ecosystem, whether you are um, a recipient of the, the value that that creates or are, um, you know, orchestrator of that ecosystem trying to achieve the, the, the strategy and objective that you have, you know, there is a, a spot for strategy and intention uh, around it. So, you know, there are other ones, but uh, I, will, I will stay on 
this type of ecosystem because it does exemplify the industry lens on the ecosystem. Um, there are certainly regional lenses of ecosystems. We always hear about Southern Ontario and the manufacturing that we have there. So that is kind of the natural one that you think about when you think regional uh, ecosystems. So if you are more of a regional player, if there is influence and value to drive from a regional organization, you know, there is absolutely um, focus on regional ecosystems. Um, and then if you think about as a, as a client, as a, somebody that, um, as an organization that is looking to advance their their agenda with their clients, with their with the society and such, there are issue-driven ecosystems as well that help, um, you know, uh, influence and evolve and, um, you know, and, and make impact to society. The, you know, the, the most uh, current one and the most active one that I see is the whole focus on ESG, for example, as issue-based yeah. ecosystem. And again, uh, individuals will not be able to solve that problem, but how do we get together and work together to address it? Um, and the drive value, I think, is the uh, the whole uh, the, embodiment of the ecosystem in that this is, So then, this is this is this is the golden nugget here for me, and I, I hope for our audience. So don't just think of ecosystems as the number of technology companies that you work with you know, create a system there. But think of the ecosystem, just like you described. There are industry ecosystems that perhaps include not just for-profit companies, but also might include governments and academia that come together to, to advance or transform industry. Then there are issue-based ones, re regional-based ones, and probably the most powerful things occur it, at the intersections of those. When you have an industry ecosystem interacting and solving for a issue and these co things coming together i would love to hear from vince and from jay are there any other great examples of ecosystems that are that, that you are aware of that are really making impact well I, i'll just jump in on the example you gave in healthcare because as you were describing the healthcare ecosystem first of all payer provider uh, uh health health and life science organizations those are separate ecosystems within the ecosystem. Then I think about all the supplier ecosystems supporting hospital systems and all those organizations, like whether they're in the construction industry or various industries, there are aggregate ecosystems. And then in tech, relevant in tech, are the technology organizations that come together as an ecosystem to support health and life sciences, payer provider. Yeah. Uh, so you have all these other ecosystems within an ecosystem, and you could take that permutation across. And at Dalbar, as you say, uh, talk about like within the nonprofit world, there are ecosystems of nonprofits that support the healthcare uh, from various aspects, various uh, avatars, I would say. So we could take this permutations. Again, Jay's going to say that it's all one big ecosystem. But as you can see, these subsets of ecosystem come together to solve for a specific value creation. Mm. No, it's, a, it's a great lead in because you know, ecosystems within ecosystems and stuff like that starts to become a little bit of a misnomer. Yeah. If you relate an ecosystem to a universe, we all live in one universe. We all don't rotate around the same sun. We're not all in the same solar system. Yeah. You know, we don't all be part of the same galaxy. But the fact is, is there is a one singular, you know, organic system that everything runs in. So I'll add a few uh, to, to what you said. Obviously, regional differences. There's obviously issue based. There's obviously industries. Canada has 27 major industries, 297 sub industries. You know, obviously the regions. There's not just the 10 provinces, but there's the very regional, like you mentioned, manufacturing and, and places in in uh, parts of Canada. There's yep. product based type of um, ecosystems. There are buyer based ecosystems. I might be a marketing buyer inside one of those manufacturing companies in Southern Ontario. And that creates, you know, as a marketing type buyer, I have 11,039 ISVs competing for my attention. I have major platforms that I'm building. I'm spending 51% of my time on tech, but I have a whole a myriad of relationships I have to deliver growth for my company. That's an ecosystem. I have delivery models that sit within ecosystems. So again, there's a lot of different things that, that go into that, but every single company has a market TAM, target addressable market size. Every single customer of every single type that could possibly buy your product. 
And inside of that, to get to every part of that, to get up to the plate and swing at every ball that's pitched, creates a massive set of, you know, universe level, you know, astronomy. Yeah. To map that out, what your serviceable size of that TAM is. And that's your singular ecosystem. Yeah. You're describing essentially a neural network. It's, 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 it's right. You're, it's a neural network. It's, it's, it's the millions, the numbers that are millions are the synapses that, that exist between these nodes. And each organization essentially is a node in this neural network. Right. So the, right. the, the trick in question is how do you sitting as one node appropriately light up the right, the right nodes with right synapses to create a solution that is driving value for you individually in this universe? or in this brain, right? We have a couple of questions coming that I think might be relevant for us to address even now, uh, because we talk about ecosystem as a collection of relationships. It is certainly expected that some members of your ecosystem that you might be competitors, right? How, how does that work? Um, is it uncommon to have competitors within the same ecosystem that's being leveraged, right? And uh, Anyone can answer that question. Yeah, I, I can kick that yeah. one off. It, it's becoming more and more common. The coopetition, and let's jump out of technology and jump into cars. A few yep. days ago, General Motors agreed with Tesla to use their entire charging network. A few days before that, Tesla signed the deal with Ford. And whether you call Tesla a tech company or a car company is a little bit irrelevant, but they're absolutely disrupting and creating the future of that industry 20 years from now, which is called transportation as a service. Before that is self-driving, before that is going full electric. But all of those partnerships, when everything below the driver is a platform, mm -hmm. everything in front of the driver, 91% of people will not buy a car today unless it has Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Yeah. The next version of CarPlay takes over your speedometer, your battery gauge, your climate control. So as a manufacturer, if you're Ford, and you're building a, a, an F-150 Lightning, every pixel in front of the driver and passengers is owned by a big tech company. Every uh, battery ion below the driver is owned by another platform. You're now facing a risk, an existential risk in a $5 trillion industry of becoming a sheet metal company. And I sold laptops for 17 years. And I know the value proposition of wrapping plastic around other people's technology. <laughs> yeah. And, value goes yeah. there. and yeah. who pulls a profit out of the auto industry 20 years from now? And whether it's a platform like an Uber, whether it's a manufacturer that you subscribe to deliver your transportation as a service, or it happens to be an Apple, Google, Microsoft type that you subscribe to, it's not where, the, you know, we're not going to stop moving from point A to point B. It's who's going to share in the profits of that. And what kind of partnerships are you going to need over the next 20 years to earn more than your fair share of profits in moving 8 billion people from point A to point B? Yeah. yeah. So maybe let's maybe linger on a little bit on this, on the value of these different types of ecosystems. Like what, what, like what kind of value do they actually, are they actually able to create? Shall, shall we have a little bit on that? Maybe, maybe Vince, you can kick us off on that one. Well, you suggested the neural network. So I, I think that synapse that goes off is the customer value. I think at the center value. of every ecosystem is the customer. Yeah. So the answer to that question specifically is what value are you creating to the end customer? And then the ecosystem surrounds that. And I think that's how you have to, the value creation and, and the customer value is where you start. That's where you center. Yeah. Yeah. So now, just, just to maybe further that, then. Dalibor, and to, at the same time, maybe try to answer one of the questions that came through as well. Um, you know, when it comes to Deloitte, um, if we, when we, in our ecosystem is, I would say, a massive ecosystem. And it includes, yes, technology organizations. It includes government uh, institutions, schools, um, uh, regulators. Uh, it includes many different types of relationships, even individual influencers. When I think about, you know, even, you know, speaking on this on this webcast, and so, um, and so the question was, you know, how about the competition? Would they be part of your ecosystem? And and I would say absolutely yes. 
And um, what Wins just mentioned, and they are in the Lloyd context, uh, we have our competitors that we work with in a certain situations to deliver what? Well, the value to our customer. Yeah. And I think this is the time what I wanted to highlight is to Vince's point is when we focus on the right things and when we have a common objective of providing a different experience, uh, driving the value in a different way, then uh, these types of relationships can get formed and ecosystems truly become richer uh, than for what they would be otherwise. So wanted to chime in on that, that would work. And that's excellent. And that value for the customer would be whatever customer decides or chooses to, to define as value. It could be, it could be ecosystem could be there to help you accelerate your product to market. So go to market acceleration, right? right? Ecosystem around that. There could be an ecosystem that improves the overall performance and closes your skill and capability gaps. There could be an ecosystem that helps you innovate faster, right? So e each one of those really is a value-driven statement that at the epicenter has a customer in it. Now, that question, Dan, that, that you mentioned, uh, like, about, like, what is Deloitte role? Like, Deloitte can actually be an effective orchestrator of this. Like, this is this is what how we can help, right? I I, I think there's a few things, uh, maybe just to set the stage, and would love uh, external perspectives as well. But I would say, first, our role is to elevate the topic, is mm -hmm. to bring it forward as a way of thinking about execution of the strategy, as a possibility, um, a possible lever for faster, better, more comprehensive execution of a corporate strategy. So that's first. The second is to educate around how to do it. And yeah. um, uh, because it doesn't necessarily, for an organization that has not done this um, yet, uh, you know, for the next 10 years, we'll absolutely have to figure it out um, and, and be very impactful in how they do that. Um, you know, it can be overwhelming in terms of how you start, where you start, who should be doing it, how should we be doing it. And, you know, even framing a, a case for it could be challenging in many, many instances. And then lastly, because we have such an expansive ecosystem, you know, we do and, and we have, um, you know, perspectives on, on that ecosystem from different lenses and value points. Uh, we often think of ourselves as being able to orchestrate ecosystems yeah. for our clients, yeah. being able to pull the right ecosystem together. And create the structure and the value and uh, you know and align it to, to, to strategy uh, to as I said accelerate realization of value from that ecosystem. This is this is excellent. A number of questions. Thanks for that. Number of questions are coming about like challenges of standing the ecosystem up and running it. M maybe what, what we can reflect on and perhaps Jay, you can you can kick us off with this. What what have you observed are the key challenges and issues that organizations face as they start assembling? and orchestrating ecosystems. Yeah, I think anyone listening so far, you know, as we keep peeling back the onion here, we keep peeling back the complexity levels. Yeah. When we just talked about the vectors around regional and we talked about industries and stuff, actually, if you multiply those together, there's 35 million permutations. Yeah. And the fact is, is Deloitte is very large. It's very, very capable. And it's plugged into a lot of those places. It's not plugged into all 35 million. Of course. But the fact of the matter is, no one can be all things to all people all the time, which is the very basics of partnerships. You work with others and, and you're never gonna be in your own swim lane. I've never met two companies that won't overlap in some way and have some level of competition in some product or portfolio area or something like that. So the seven partners that are competing and, and, and trusted in every customer aren't perfectly aligned and perfectly in their spots, but, over cases, it looks like a Venn diagram, that there are places in Canada that Deloitte is absolutely the right company to partner with. And those companies know it, the governments know it, everything else. And, and at that point, you know, who plays in that room and the orchestration roles and, and, and stuff like that is pretty obvious. Mm. But in ecosystem, when you get to some of the questions on governance, when yeah, you get yeah. to questions on how to, you know, get to that level of automating, and, and you know, maybe injecting some AI and other pieces to it. I, I look at it multiple ways. Over my shoulder, there's a channel tech stack, an ecosystem tech stack. There's 223 companies, several of them large Canadian companies that are innovating in 11 islands around how to run this future ecosystem. Yeah. You know, there's different parts of it. You know, those ecosystem partners that are helping you in marketing, for example, in those first 28 moments before your customer 
makes a selection on what they're going to buy, your partners are leading those moments. Uh, it could be a webinar like this, a white uh, paper, it could be an event, whatever it is, they're helping the customer get smart and get to that point. How you attribute what they're doing, how you measure, monitor, and manage what they're doing, how you govern how that's working. And at the end of the cookie, where you can't just go buy that data from Google anymore, partnerships become everything in that marketing partnership level. I could repeat this for the sales when you land that customer. And then in a subscription consumption model, which 76% of Canadian companies are now at the board level, actively talking about, strategically planning for. You know, from your toothbrush to your car is, is going to become a monthly fee. And that's where the value equation it comes. And that's how partnerships are changing from a linear model today. Yeah. I'll say there's 223 companies innovating about how this is going to be governed and how this is going to be orchestrated and, and operated. Uh, and we're not just gonna hire tens of millions of humans to go stick between all these partnerships and make sure everybody's collaborating and co-innovating in a peaceful way. So this is exciting. I mean, we're in the early innings of this decade of the ecosystem. And there's several you know, billionaires that are just being created you know, five years from now uh, in the entrepreneurship and the innovation that they're driving to how this is all going to work at scale. Mm -hmm. I will suggest though, as well, we're, we still are bringing the organizations along, right? It was the Accenture study five years ago suggested that 76% of CEOs in every industry and in every geography said that ecosystems were going to be key to their transformation today. But yet the, in the organizations of the past, the C-suite of the past is still dictating how organizations operate and getting the C-suite on board has been one of the biggest challenges to eco ecosystem led growth. And it's one of the key initiatives that we're all trying to seek. Yeah. And so since we're sort of talking about key challenges now on, on what of working within ecosystems, I, I like the fact that you mentioned strategy then. I think that uh, there's pro there, I, I know there is something there about, you know, not letting yourself just, you know, back, back yourself into your, your ecosystem is not necessarily the collection of partnerships you currently have, right? Th th I mean, that is an ecosystem, but that, that is not what we are talking about here. We talk about a strategic approach to ecosystem then, right? right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And I would take that uh, in a few different ways, Dalibor. One, I would say um, that's the, ch the challenge is how do you look at your ecosystem? How, like, what is it? Where do you even start? Yeah. And this is what I think Vince Vince's comment sets me up for is say, like, unless there is a thought about that in your corporate strategy, in the kind of role of the you know strategy officer, I saw some of the question there, yeah. is to tee, tee up that conversation for the organization. And unless it's there uh, as being supported and 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 properly enabled by by C suite, oftentimes it's going to end up being more of a tactical relationship based one-to-one -one type of conversation versus conversation around broader ecosystem that enables your organization. So I would say that that's, that's the first, first challenge that, that we see. I would say second challenge is, you know, we certainly look at from Deloitte perspective as one big ecosystem for ourselves, but I can see how organization, different organizations may look at, um, you know, framing multiple types of different ecosystems, you know, for themselves and different role they may have across those ecosystems. And so Jay was talking about this collisions between between industries, which I think is, you know, collisions, convergence, call it whichever way you want, but it is absolutely real and it's happening. And so having thoughtful uh, approach to where do we sit on that intersection as organization and how do we leverage disruption and opportunities of the future where we're strong and where we need to uh, leverage the ecosystem becomes essential. But I will go in the last comment, something as fundamental as saying, you know, two things around ecosystem. We started around ecosystems being relationship-based and value-based structures. And if you think about it, the value is in the eye of the beholder. So I think it's important to be able to distill that value and get that alignment with your ecosystem around what are we actually trying to accomplish together. Um, 
And then the relationship side is also important because, you know, relationship can be strong. They can come in and go. And, you know, in today's way, ways of working, they these relationships kind of circulate around from organization to organization, oftentimes, you know, enriching or enabling. And in some cases, some, some, sometimes having a negative effect on that ecosystem as well. So those are simply laws of physics that will continue existing, but building the strong foundations on relationships, on understanding the organizations in your ecosystem and the intention and value that it drives, I would say are the challenges, but also at the same time as enablers of the right, uh, right strategy and execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really what, what you're saying, to summarize what you're saying is that one of the biggest first challenge really is to be focused and have an explicitly created strategy around your ecosystems. That will be a way to achieve your overarching corporate objectives, ambitions, purpose. So de develop a strategy, spend thinking, and that 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 perhaps is a, is is where the chief strategy officer comes together with supply chain people, with chief information officers together to actually shape that strategy and then and then roll it into action. Yeah. Um, there is an interesting question, a simple but interesting question. What does winning look like for an ecosystem? How do you actually measure the performance of ecosystem and alliances within it, perhaps? Is that, Jay, something you can take us into? Yeah, there's absolutely no change in the measurement of whatever function you're after. If you're a company, the measurement is revenue, profit, market share, customer satisfaction, the same things you've been measuring for decades. The fact of the matter is getting to that, those numbers is radically shifting as your business model shifts. I'm, you know, I use the auto example of getting your fair share of the value, economic value of that opportunity. You know, if you want to talk about ESG and governments and things, you know, the, the um, actual objective is to reach, you know, global goals and, and to adhere to things to, you know, which is more, um, you know, for humanity and, and other things. So again, the, the measurements don't change. How you get to those measurements is, is what's changing. Mm. Yeah. And met one of the, Jay talked about the ecosystem tech stack. That's been one of the conundrums, I would say, for, this, for the C-suite, the CFO, the CEO saying, am I getting the same outcome? Am I measuring the same results? And the attribution of how the ecosystem is supporting getting to that end result, that outcome, um, it's been vague over the years because we haven't had the systems and tools to support it. So you can have a strategy, but you need to have the operating system to support that execution and 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 flow up the data to yeah. support the outcomes. Yeah, I, wanted you... to, uh, I wanted to take on that chief strategy officer. Yeah, yeah please do. Vince and, and Dan were very correct at the beginning. You know, channels is a department and, and always has been. You know, you're a department that runs those auto dealerships. You're the department that runs the retail channel. Yeah. You're the department that runs alliances. An ecosystem, which is the chief strategy officer, is really the person that injects it in inside of every line of business. You know, as they walk through each of the 12 lines of business, the partnership conversation changes but it's also injecting the partnership conversation. Your, your CMO, I kind of talked about the end of the cookie. You got these 28 moments. You don't have the data anymore. You've got, you know, the, the way you've done things in the past through the decade of marketing previous to this is now shifting. So what are your partnership strategies when your potential partners own those 28 moments? The different sales, like money changing hands is radically shifting. 75% of world trade going through others is pretty sh is shifting quickly because you don't buy subscriptions and consumption models the same way. I don't buy Netflix from the cable guy in the white van. This is changing pretty fast. How you retain that customer and renew that customer every 30 days forever changes. And those seven partners that surround that customer are the ones that enrich that contract, are the ones that make it sticky are the ones that earn you a customer for life. I just walked through three executives and a partnership conversation. I can move over into tech alliances and how we build our products together and co-innovate. Again, I can walk into every department as a chief strategy officer and create these ecosystem links where now the ecosystem isn't a department. It's literally a foundational framework of how we run our company and get our fair share 
of the economic value of what we compete in in the longer term future. That is the CSO's opportunity. And I'll say that there's very few of them today that are skilled in these areas to be able to have that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to add to Jay's point and then answer another question that's focused around kind of, I think it was framed as value pricing, but I'm going to take that into more of a commercial conversation. Um, if you're going to co-innovate, co-design, co-develop together with your ecosystem, with relationships, with alliances, part of the discussion is how do we air, uh, how do you create and charge for that value? And how do you recover that value in terms of, um, you know, how clients experience it? Um, and, you know, the conversation that I often comes up is the fact that when you have multiple organizations collaborating around same topic, because they bring different components together, their pricing models may be different. And they're, you know, and, and those are fundamental because that's how they run their business. That's how they plan their business. And so um, I think that exemplifies Dalibor, the, the need to be flexible, to anticipate, um, you know, that these ecosystems and how we work within them will make us change how we are and how we operate as well. And all with that purpose of creating something that's more value to the market and to our clients. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think just tying two more components of the conversation today, points today, one around hyperscalers and their role in the ecosystem that Vince brought up, the, the role around multiple partnerships and organizations kind of playing together to innovate and accelerate that innovation. And then how that comes in, in form of a product or service to market and price associated with that. We need to be much more intentional, all of us together, in terms of how do we create the right models, even if that means changing how we actually run our businesses. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, the next one of the next frontiers for you know, uh, for ecosystems is to really become fluid around how to do that. You're, you're starting to see some of this in the tech sector right now, right? To your point, bringing multiple organizations together to create value for a customer in marketplaces. And marketplaces, Canalys has predicted that by the end of 2025, $45 billion will flow through technology marketplaces. It's, a, it's roughly about 10 or 11 or $12 billion today. 80% of that, to quote Jay McBain, will go through the three hyperscalers and the way that they're organizing their field organizations to support value creation is this placard, this non-fungible token that has multiple parties offers aggregated. So there's work to be done. It's not, this is not an easy task, right? To bring multiple organizations to, together to create value and repeatable value. But we're starting to see this today with the marketplaces and the evolution I'm calling it the marketplace moment, in fact, as Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are aligning very critically to driving success and value through marketplaces. Mm -hmm. There's a big risk here, and, and governments are, are starting to catch up to the risk. The EU, the UK, the Canadian government, the US governments are starting to catch up in that all 27 industries, as every company becomes a tech company, converges, as software eats the world, whichever you, know, you want to follow, the tech industry over the last uh, 20 or 30 years has won over multiple industries and taken the value out of it. You know, when we went through yeah. music, the actual value of music is the content. But there was a point with Napster and things where 80, 90% of the value ended up shifting over to big tech companies. The reason that they're valued at trillions of dollars on the stock market is the anticipation that they will come in and Apple and Microsoft and Google and, and Amazon and others are going to take some of that and the most profitable pieces of that $5 trillion auto industry, mm -hmm. that they're going to come into pharmaceuticals and, and medical. They're going to come into banking and insurance, which you're seeing. They're going to come into manufacturing. Yeah. All 27 industries, the most profitable parts of the $104 trillion world economy is going to go to big tech as the platform and everyone else becomes sheet metal companies or plastic wrapping companies or some other kind of services companies around that. And that's the risk in all of this. So when you talk about value-based or consumption-based pricing or usage-based pricing and subscription models and things like that, we got to be very careful on this convergence that this doesn't just become, there was a question on the Apple iCar. 
I will let you know that Apple and Google and others shut down their car um, divisions during this downturn. Not for the reason they don't want to be part of that $5 trillion industry. There's smarter people at play. When you own every pixel in front of the driver and you draw, own the entire experience, the most profitable pieces of that industry is the driving experience of getting people from point A to point B. It's not the sheet metal. And it doesn't happen to be the batteries and, and things underneath no. the drive. So I will let you know that they're looking at every industry and they're looking at the most profitable pieces of every industry and, and removing that piece into their own. Yeah. This, this is, uh, so, so Jay, you, you have established an, an urgent call for action here. This is urgent call for action. So I would like us to maybe have a little bit of a discussion on where do, we, where do people go from here? So now we had this debate, we had this conversation, we established what ecosystems are. I think that is a compelling case that this is something that every organization needs to deliberately to think of. Um, Dan, do you want to go first? Like, I would love to get your reflections, everybody's reflections on what should be the next steps for those in our audience who are listening to this and saying, hey, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll give you a consultant answer. It depends. It depends mm -hmm. on where you are as an organization uh, at this point in time. But I would say, even through this conversation, uh, you know, to almost summarize, few things came up. One, um, think about how to influence the C-suite. And, and if you're in position to do so, um, you know, uh, think about how you're going to raise the question around corporate ecosystem strategy. I would say that would be that would be one. If your more your organization is more advanced and it has resemblances of this across the organization, different functions that are already there, think about how you unify them to actually have more impact and actually switch the conversation to be more of an ecosystem strategy conversation. So depends on where you are from your, you know, let's call it maturity perspective. Two, um, I think ecosystems do require um, people that will cheer them on, people that will advocate for them, people like Jay and Vince that spend their time looking at opportunities in these ecosystems and uh, enabling them effectively as well. And so, you know, part of the conversation absolutely needs to be how do we bring forward to not just our organization, but also uh, our clients and uh, our stakeholders, broader stakeholders, this conversation in a way in which they will understand it and be able to action it. Um, so um, that would be the second piece that I heard and that I would absolutely agree with. And then I would say, you know, nothing happens until you put it on a piece of paper, or in this case, maybe type it up on your screen. Um, but the strategy on this, why, how, who, um, how do you change and inflict change on organization itself and organizational culture to think more about ecosystems and to drive more value from these types of engagements and relationships, I think that's the key. And so, um, you know, if you can do step one, two, three, I think organization would be well on the way of embracing and engaging in the ecosystem conversation and their own ecosystem. So gentlemen, uh, Jay, Vince, um, I don't want to put you on a spot, but are there any great stories, any great organizations, like think of, it, of, of, of organizations that would typically be clients of a firm like Deloitte. So, you know, banks, insurance companies, manufacturers. Are there any great examples of organizations who have already figured this out and are doing this very well that you might be able to highlight as good examples or good, 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 good places to go and learn more, perhaps? Better go first. No, Vince, go ahead. <laughs> so... I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the hyperscalers. Yes, yeah, actually. We may have lost wins, unfortunately. All right, I guess I guess I'm going first. You you're gonna uh, you're so, gonna carry on on that one. <laughs> that's right. I, I paused uh, Vince's uh, recording so I can uh, I can go first. Yes. Uh, I I think that the strategic elements that were just outlined were perfect, and I would say that the. I'll get more tactical for a minute. You, you talk about next steps. I got two recommendations. I highly tactical, roll up your sleeves type of tactics. Yeah. yeah. Is your average customer today 
has seven partners they trust. Go figure out who those are. I'm not as concerned with you know, Microsoft's 470,000 partners, which got them to market over the last 43 years, that got them you know, to be the second most valuable company on the planet. I'm more interested in the 400 new partners that join Microsoft every single day. What do they do? Every dollar of Microsoft, and you can go read what their latest earnings are, every dollar kicks out $7.53 of economic value. Every dollar of Salesforce kicks out $6.19. AWS, $6.40. Google, $5.70. I would start understanding from the ground up what those seven partners are that are trusted. Do we know them? Do they know us? Are they gaining value from us? And what's the economic system from the grassroots, kind of the bottoms up? And what is the coverage and capacity and what would our ecosystem actually look like? And start, you know, on the back of a napkin, drawing this neural network, you know, outwards, you know, into that customer, you know, base. Mm -hmm. Top down was what I cautioned is the economic value. You can rush into a hyperscaler relationship with uh, AWS or Microsoft or Google, make those tech alliances and stuff as things go that way for a bank or insurance company and stuff, but work with the end in mind you know, kind of your seven habits. The end in mind is your multi-trillion dollar industry and the value it generates to shareholders, the value it generates to consumers has different elements. And how you play these partnerships going forward is to maximize your shareholder value and understand how this is all gonna take place. You don't want the value of what you create, which happens to be the music, which happens to be the delivery of people from point A to point B and the financial transactions of allowing people to you know, conduct their lives and, and live in a home and, and drive a car. Wh whatever industry you're in, you got to make sure that the actual product, the actual service or the delivery, the value is evenly shared among all those participating. And then that's what you need to protect in these relationships top down by understanding that neural network and, and where kind of this all ends up you know, at 10 or 20 years from now. So what I'll add to what Jay said, now that you can hear me again, is that there are a set of operating principles on supporting all of this within an organizational structure, both your internal victory, as I refer to it, you need to get your mindset right, right? Growth mindset, which is a, a leading principle in successful partnering, growth mindset, value mindset, we, your organization needs to understand that there is an ecosystem that will create value and understanding that that is a concept in itself. And then you need to build that, that value proposition, that joint value proposition, and understand what you're looking to go drive. Then you can go across to the other side and start building this flywheel of working across your ecosystem and generating success, right? You might start, you might start small in this, not with a hundred organizations in your ecosystem, maybe with two or three. And as you build success, you build that flywheel. And that will repeat and repeat and repeat. And then always recognize that we live in a world that's constantly evolving, right? We're living in a time of rapid change and transformation. We weren't talking about Gen AI very much eight months ago, but look yeah. how our world has evolved just in this short period of time. And you need to be agile as an organization and the ecosystems that you form and that, that neural network that you described, Dalibor, is going to change based on where the world is shifting, where we're going as a yeah. world. That's that's wonderful. Excellent. Uh, we are coming at time. Dan, any final sort of closing thoughts and, and remarks? And we'll set us up for the next episode in the series. Yeah, I would just say, you know, um, this is, uh, to, to, Jay's, to Vince's point just now, an evolving conversation. I think um, organizations that are on this journey already um, are investing time, effort, and resources to get to get it right. Organizations that are not should seriously contemplate how they become part of the conversation. Yeah. And, um, you know, as long as we anchor these conversations in value and the value, uh, you know, value that we together drive, uh, my sense and my certainly expectation as well as experience um, helps us go through a lot of noise that otherwise would be there. Um, and helps align us better in terms of what relationships we need to have and how we need to collaborate together. So um, that would be 
that would be kind of my summary, Dalibor, on of the conversation. Excellent. And uh, I think some of the great questions were there. You know, uh, maybe just to answer this quickly, the last one around what can make ecosystems fail. It's that misalignment, I would say, on value, and then misalignment on relationships. Yeah. Trust, I think, is at the core of the ecosystem, and we need to take that forward as well. So trust equation is significant. Dan, Jay, and Vince, thank you very much for your time and for your wisdom. We are just starting this conversation now through this channel, and as I mentioned, we'll have multiple episodes of this series. We're going to look at all the questions we have received, and that will help us actually inform what the next session is going to focus on. But uh, I want to thank the audience members for sticking through this conversation with us, for all of your engagement and questions. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. Jay, Vince, Dan, have yourselves a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.